Good afternoon. We'll officially call the meeting to order and thank you all for being here. Madam Clerk, has anyone signed up for public comment? Yes, sir. No public comments. Number three on the agenda item, and those of you that may not be aware on the my far left rear corner back there is documentation in regards to information about this meeting today. Uh, number three is the workshop goal setting and priorities. What's the pleasure of the board? How do you want to go forward? Mr. Mayor. David, I wanted to ask you just uh, what do you need to get out of this meeting today? Ten get done before the end of next year items. Thank you. And, and, and I, that probably sounded facetious. It was not intended to, but, you know, goals and objectives, we've got three or four pages. If we could distill it down and prioritize, it would make our life a lot easier, not only setting up the budget, but understanding of what a more tangible and realistic uh, work plan we need going forward for the upcoming fiscal year. So I, I think I heard you say that possible prioritized uh, ranked or consolidating or, and distilling too because there's okay. There's, Can I explain oh. how I did it too? In case sure, <laughs> please. I, I just, some of you had the same topic but different items so the topics are like the solid dot and then underneath excuse me underneath them would be each individual person so they might not all match up exactly because they're individual people if you want to maybe come up with you actually what you want for that line item too okay I, I thought that was great because it, it grouped them logically. <laughs> we all want to talk about a certain topic, but we have different ideas of what we want to get out of it. So I think that was very helpful. So can I make a suggestion? Remember when we talked about what our, um, how we were going to go through this? We talked about must do, should do, and need to do. Maybe could we first go through the list and say whether it's a must do, should do, or nice to do, and that would help us see what floats up to the top? And then when we get all the must-dos and the should-dos, then we can see which one of them are the top ten. And I only picked ten because it's I know, a round I know, I know. easy. But then we would have it now, prioritized. Now, now, now that the clerk has explained that and it's consolidated, and there's still a whole bunch of items. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, David, you're looking primarily for things like CIP, Type things. We have some issues. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. I'm just trying to get you to pull the microphones down. Oh. Well, I don't know. If I'm Can you hear me now? Yeah. <laughs> there you go. All right. I. You're looking primarily for those things that might be like CIP items and things like that. In other words, we have monitor the hazard inlet situation, but that's you know that's a monitor thing. That's not really. I don't know how labor intensive that is. Well. We should probably pull that one out and talk about it some specifically and uh, because there's a little bit more to it than just watching something and seeing if it's going to hurt you. I mean, there's there's probably an adjective or an adverb we need to, to, to pull in that. But uh, CIP items or programmat programmatic work toward providing services. Okay, also, I, I guess I want to add on to what um, Tracy said for should do, must do, nice to have. Um, we did come up with priorities, um, health and safety, providing core services, protecting property, providing amenities. And I think, I mean, I was looking through, I think we can categorize them that way too because that helps prioritize them in terms of health and safety being our top priority. Ones that address it should get higher priority. It, it, I, I tried to do it. it. It did well till the end, and then some of the general items just didn't really weren't easy to put into a category like that. Just want to start at the top and start running down. Yes. Okay. Um, Madam Clerk, do you want to lead this, or do you want, how, how do you want to help you organize it? 
to throw back to us? Oh, I'll, however you want. <laughs> I can just take the notes as you guys go along, or oh, whatever you please with me. Why don't you, we let you walk us down through it, if that's all right? Evaluate the stormwater study recommendations and develop implementation plan, including funding. So, so my assumption was that we have a stormwater study underway and we will get recommendations when? <laughs> Sometime? Chris, do you know when Michael um, will be wrapping up that study? Okay, because I, I mean, I had one of those, but I think we're saying the same thing, which is see what that study comes up with in terms of recommendations and see what the funding requirements would be to implement those recommendations and then put that in the SIP. Yeah, I understand yeah. that one. Okay. So, so can I just say, yeah, so I think we're just going to probably consolidate these, right? So I would say just let's use the second bullet because that's kind of more comprehensive. Everybody, that would be what we would have under storm order. And that should, so Heather, can you help us keep track of, I mean, that, that would be a should do in my book. On the, uh, <clears throat> the developing the plans and specs one on the stormwater study, I think that's a second tier accomplishment. The first one will be to evaluate, you know, the, the total programmatics, but there will be a follow on on developing the plans and specs for specific projects. I'll, I'll tell you, that, that was mine that I put in, David, and I was thinking we would get this study. And if I understand, we would be looking at grants eventually for some of this stuff for the stormwater? Yes. So do we need plans and specs to move on to the no. grant phase? Uh, I don't know. I don't okay. Know. No, that was no, my well, thinking there. Let, let, me, let me couch it this way. In, in talking with the Corps of Engineers, because that's who we're looking at for the stormwater funding, the 5113 program, um, the, the inclusion of our general reconnaissance is good enough for the first phase to get it funded. And then we'll have to go back in with plans and specs for project specifics. Do you think we would get to that in this upcoming fiscal year? Uh, it's probably going to take this fiscal year to get to a point where we know what the – it's probably going to be next fiscal year. Okay. On, on specific project funding. So maybe that wording needs to change a little bit to reflect well, what I'll, you're saying. I'm just pointing out that uh, the, the first bullet is really a – is really a follow-on subset action to the second bullet. Right. So what I'm proposing is that we have the first bullet. Yes. I mean, the second bullet is going to be our actual objective, and it includes the first bullet. So, I But, but it would be sequential. Yes, of yeah. course. I mean, that's part of develop implementation plan, including funding, right? Okay. That works for you, what we got there. Yes. Okay. And then... I think you said it's a should do. Uh, I'm proposing it's a should do if anyone else wants to have a debate about it. No, I agree with that. I think it's a protecting property in terms of the priority. Assistant manager. And just remember, this is one of your earmark requests. <clears throat> so we definitely should do it. <laughs> I don't know if we need to go back. I mean, to me, a must-do is something that's a legal requirement or has, you know, legal issues associated with it. A should-do is got consequences if we don't do it, but not, you know, not to the extent of a must-do legal thing. Like ADA would be a must-do. Yes. So for that item, we have evaluate, I'm just going to keep it, evaluate stormwater study recommendations and develop implementation plan, including funding, as should do. Correct. Yeah, and, yes. and as protecting property, unless 
somebody wants to debate, you know, because with priorities, priorities, we've got health and safety is first, providing core services second, protecting property third, and amenities fourth. So for prioritization, it's, it seems like it's protecting property. Is that what we decided when we, when we, I don't think I remember all those things as our priorities. I thought we decided it was going to be just those, those were subsets of must do, should do, nice to do. Um, I don't have that health yeah. and safety and all that other stuff. I, I had our goals is no tax increase, no deficit spending yeah. set aside for beach nourishment, and then the priorities were these oh. four. <coughs> I don't know Heather, where do you, yeah. I didn't Wait. bring that old package. Yeah, me either. Yeah, <laughs> Sorry. All right. I, I think we can keep walking through them, recognize what must be done. So do um, we want to just write should do, or do yeah. we want to write protecting property? Also? Well, if you can write them both, we can correct it if, if that's not the right prioritization. Okay. But. okay. So then the next one would be water system. Under that, we have water tower needs assessment, develop plans and specs based on capacity study, completion of the water system assessment, water tower, and corresponding update of the CIP. Okay, my understanding, same thing. We've got a study underway that we will get results. Um, and then I don't know, Chris, do we have another study that's also the GIS water assets, or are they the same study, or how many studies do we have in GIS, flight? The GIS stuff was part of that, that contract. Okay. Yeah, but everything is in that list right there is included in that assessment. And do you know when that will be done? I'm hoping, he was, I'm hoping by the last this month, maybe the first of March, but I will follow up at the end of that. Yep. Chris, do you think there's any chance we could get the stormwater engineer and the water system engineer to come in, give us a, a brief of what we're looking at? And does everybody think that's worthwhile? I, I would assume we could do whatever you want. You mean when we get the assessment done? Well, just let us know what he's got going on. I mean, well, I mean, I would just wait for it to be completed, and then I'm sure we're going to okay. discuss it. Okay, belay that request. That make perfect good sense of letting him complete it, and if yeah. there's any questions, then we can we bring him to, this, okay. to the table there and see what everybody's concerned are with it. If anything important there, uh, we might be able to look at So I would probably make the proposal again. We'll just keep the third bullet as the objective since it encompasses the first two. Everyone okay with that? And that, again, would be it should do. And then I, I put that as a core service. Water sewer as a core service priority, however. Okay, so I've got completion of water system assessment and corresponding update of the CIP should do core. Yep. Great. Sounds good. All right, the next one's sewer. Under that, we've got sewer system, lift station number two, Greensboro lift station upgrade, complete pump station two upgrade, evaluate future capacity increase requirements, and start work on sewer station number two upgrade. <laughs> <laughs> We're missing station two, aren't we? <laughs> um, obviously, we want to get number two done, so that should be straightforward. <laughs> I, had, I had put in there just... Um, evaluate com uh, future sewer capacity increase if we have a water increase. Chris has told me he doesn't think that's necessary, so if that's where that falls, that's okay. I don't know if you want to look at that. Okay. Okay, well then... We can strike that portion off. Yeah. One thing I would like to add to this one is, uh, and this may be a um, non-critical, is to look at the vacuum bypass system. If everybody's agreeable to that, I didn't add that in under sewer. I don't disagree with it. I don't know. Maybe it's two things. You know, to me, get sewer station two done is right. one, and then that yeah, is, I, is a separate. 
Yeah, Chris and I have had a little discussion. It could be very pricey. Well, um, it'd be a SIP item, but um, yeah. Yes, sir. Well, we made it in 2016 now <clears throat> without that piece of equipment. But I do think sometime in the future, it might be next week or it might be 15 years from now. I think it would be wise and best to have something like that in place. I mean, even with the pump station raised up or it's something like that, you don't ever know you could have a fire that burned every panel box on the wall when down there. And it would give you the ability to make something something happen and not lose sewer service. I do. Am I okay to spitball a number out there? Sure. I've actually talked with back last week and just a spitball number was like six hundred some thousand dollars and that don't include any electric connection stuff you have to make at the station to be able to make that work. It does give you peace of mind that you can make something happen if you do have a problem. Like I said, we made it this long without it, but sooner or later, I think somebody would be happy to have it. I had a question, and I probably should. When we did the tour, maybe I was wrong, but does that vacuum truck have that capacity to hook it up and provide a vacuum? It's got vacuum time, but it, I, it, I don't think it would do. I don't it won't, won't do what we're talking about. We could do what we need to do with that. Okay. It'd just be in an emergency if yeah. you had the fire or something like you talked and about. Actually, and that number I gave you, that was also maybe about a 10-minute conversation with the, with the head guy at Airbrack. I was kind of in hopes that maybe he would give us some pretty good prices on some of the equipment that we pulled out that we didn't need because we've got more spares than we probably know what to do with right now. But what he sent me back on the boat, you'd be foolish to send them back to him because he only offered like about $1,000. That wouldn't even have to cover the cost of shipping them back to Indiana. You know, I can rebuild those for about four or five grand a piece and, and have all the spares that you'd ever need. Okay. I was just trying to figure out ways maybe I could cut the cost. I figured it would offer a whole lot more than that because them pumps are like twenty some thousand dollars a piece. You know? yeah. That was the answer I got. <clears throat> so... Can we put that in the, what was it, the like to do category to see if we can refine that number? Yeah. That's investigate vacuum bypass system? Yeah. That's uh, a, you got that, yeah. Heather? Yes. As yeah, now for the other one, um, I, I, basically, I, I think, David, you're giving an update later on what where we stand. <laughs> I mean, I, I just kind of said, let's just do it. I didn't know what the sequence was for the funding and for the design completion and for the RP and start construction. I, I would assume we're not going to get the whole thing up and going and done next fiscal year. We'll be in flight at some level. And, and I think it's tied to funding is what my understanding of the way you described it. So, um, Unless, well, yes. If everything aligns, you think we can get it underway next year, next fiscal? So can we put down just as a complete pump station to upgrade as the consolidated version? I, I, that's the question is will we get it done or will we just get it? I mean, I think we want to get it I underway. That's our goal, right? Yeah. I mean, the goal would be to get it done, right? And that's a should. Yes. And it's a core service. Okay. So under sewer, I've got complete pump station two upgrade, should core, and then we are adding investigate vacuum bypass system like. Yeah. Yeah, correct. Both core service, right? Okay. And then we have the fire station. Under that, we've got fire station assessment county responsibility, work towards being manned 24 7, renovation <coughs> upgrade, build, current building versus purchasing land for a new building, project plan. Um, funding requirements, investigate and possibly plan for the fire station, including funding requirements. I, I got the same question. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know the current status. I know a letter was written. There was a, a request made. Um, I, I lose track of it after that, so I don't know. Um, I mean, this is in conjunction with Tri Beach, so we kind of got to move together with them, and I, I, I guess maybe, David, you could tell us or Alan, where we are with their request that they made like a year ago, I think. We haven't done anything since uh, the fire chief came in and presented the location, optimal location of, or the required location 
where the substation had to be in order to get a break on the insurance. We haven't done anything since. Okay. Um, and so since is the then. current location not adequate? It it's it's in the right spot. It is. Okay. It's, it's in the right spot. Right. But, but the but building is not adequate. That's correct. For 24/7. Mm -hmm. So well that's my question cuz yeah, my understanding was well there were kind of two things in flight. One was a whole different building that would have ladder truck capabilities and then the other one was being able to do 24-7, and I didn't know if we've already said that cannot happen in the current building or it can happen with some upgrades to it. We haven't done anything okay. since the board, so, since okay. the fire chief okay. came down and said it's got to be in this range. Beyond that, nothing has been done. Okay, so let me ask this. In order to, in order to get to those type of specifics, y'all going to need to bring in some help. Yep. yep. Um, I was yep, going to, to ask you, how do we progress thing. this Cause, thing? Because well, okay. um, the creation of fire departments, uh, it, it ranges from Alpha to Omega, uh, none of which I, I am well versed in between the two, except for the fact that Tim Evans told me, if you sleep people where you're running vehicles, you got issues that have to be dealt with. That was that was about the only thing that I have that I know about building fire departments. Okay, so for this activity, we're not going to try to solve it. I think the last bullet is probably the objective, which is investigate and possibly plan for fire station, including funding requirements. That would satisfy us. And what type of actions would you, uh, would you consider that would satisfy um, those two action words there, investigate and possibly plan? What types of things can we do that would, you know, uh, I, I, what, what, what's to I'm, bring back to y'all on I'm, that? Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking we need more coordination with Tri-Beach in terms of is this still a real, a real request or have they moved on and they want to do something else and it's, they're not interested in anymore. And then, I mean, my understanding is it's a negotiation. We've got a contract or something with a service level. You know, we come together and say, okay, if you want to do this, we've got to do that. Let's work out. What? Why don't we start with providing the board with the contract? That'd, That'd be, be good. <laughs> Let's go with that. Hey, okay. David, the next thing I would be looking because for. Because there's a, the, the, the provision of fire service in Brunswick County is a different animal with, with the, the mix of local government fire departments, volunteer fire departments within or without um, municipal corporate limits. It's, uh, it, there's a body of work on it. So start with a contract and also the law on fire fees we'll, we'll provide that to you perfect mm -hmm. but I, I think that that would go toward the investigate and possibly yeah, plan as the um, as the feeder action on um, figuring out what type of coordination with the fire department is necessary in order to scope the total requirement Okay. Yeah. So, and if they're willing to, if they're willing to man it twenty four seven, because well, I, okay, yeah. Right, I mean, that's my assumption. They got to pay the staffing, right? We we could provide the facility, but they would have to. Pay the well, we'll end up paying the people. Do we? I, I don't know what the yeah. deal is. Oh. Right. Give us the contract. Let us look at it, and then maybe we can have an intelligent okay. discussion. <laughs> okay. And that would be a should, Heather, and I think. And protecting property. Yeah. I mean, my assumption is there's no way we will have a new fire station next fiscal year. Mm -hmm. It's the plan to... Well, we'll have um, to see what, when we investigate. I, well, and my, just, um, did Christy brief y'all on the information she found out about fire yes. protection? Or my, she did, that it my couldn't be facts one are of running our, together. Yeah, okay. It couldn't be one of our... Yeah. Okay, so for fire station, we have investigated possibly plan for the fire station, including funding requirements, should protecting property, and we're going to get you a copy of the contract. Thank you. Fire fee law. Gotcha. Okay, the next item under, we're going to amenities, parks, and rec. The pavilion, we've got renovate, rebuild, wear, Repair versus replace versus move, public input needed on moving, residents concerned for noise, <laughs> develop corrective actions to eliminate structural deficiencies, and plan for the pavilion, including funding requirements. Um, 
Why don't we simply investigate the cost of removing the roof? Uh, Rick, using I... The, using the uh, stage as it is and maybe put some shades over the top of it. The concert. Yeah, I, so... The roof I'm, is the problem, not the whole structure. I think we can't really move forward on this until we see what the latest report says. Right? I mean... We have to see what the report says. Can it says. not be torn right. down before we get that report? Huh. Can it not, the top not be removed before we get a report? I don't think so, because Tim said that even if you remove the roof, you still have to have an engineer to certify it with the roof removed that it's safe. Right. That's what I heard Mr. last Evans, month. Mr. Evans, can you help us out? <clears throat> I don't know if I said that or not, but uh, I don't know if I said that or not, but you could take the top off of it. Um, like I said, you could cut it off at the guardrails if that's what you want to do. Mm -hmm. I would wait. I would wait till you got the engineer's evaluation. It shouldn't be that much longer. I, mean, I don't know how much longer it's going to take. Me. I think he told us two weeks, and it, Friday will be weeks. the end of two weeks, I believe. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll give him a call, and we can probably get that back pretty quick. But if you wanted to, you could. We we would just simply inspect the bottom half and tell you if it's okay once you took the top off. We would right. issue a permit for demolition of the to top portion. Uh, the rest of it would still be in compliance. Um, if I said that, you know what I mean, I don't remember putting it like that, but it was not my intention that you couldn't take the top off without getting an engineer analysis. I would say before you did any, you know, before you took any of it apart, get an analysis to make sure you would have to kind of thing. Rick, I kind of agree with you. That's why I said develop correction, corrective actions to get rid of whatever the structural deficiencies are, and that should be identified in that report. So we get the report in, we decide what we're going to do. And I just want to mention one other thing: we're looking at next year's budget. Not that may be something we can get done this year based on the report. That think, was my thought. Was this we need to do that this year? I mean, I don't are, think removing the top it would take. Uh, very long, we probably could get the bid out and get that done within a month. Yeah, probably right. Instead of, I don't know how much uh, engineering, you know, it's going to cost, but instead of spending the money on that, spend the money on taking the top off and you can inspect the deck. I mean, I'm just trying to save the citizens some money and give us a place to have the concert. If, if, if you cut it off at the guardrails, it would be in compliance. You may have to do some Work, you know, right. But you got to remember, you got fees, and you need to be a contract, and you move uh, a permit, and there'll be tipping fees on it, and of course, you know, you got to consider the fact that there's a sales back on that, so probably not doing it out of issue with because I think when we hear sales, we think about the playground over here. And we can't have a system like that where there's gaps because several times this past year we've had rain showers that come between the time they set up and when they start playing. And most of the contracts read, if their equipment gets wet, we buy it. So it's got to be something that covers the entire structure like what is there now. I'm not talking about a wooden roof, but you can't just go piece three or four shade cells up that you buy on Amazon and call it good because there's going to be glare on the bands and there's also going to be the potential that the rain comes down on them. It's going to have to be an entire covered structure. So I can't guarantee you we would have to investigate lead times and ordering that just because you cut the top off that we're having concerts there. We have the fall black back plan of the park, but just want to get that out there because I feel like we're starting down a conversation where we're saying, yes, if we go cut the top off of this, we can go, and we got to look for something that would cover the whole top, what that cost would be if it's in the budget, that kind of thing. So I'm not sure if Rick was aware that Christie already had an alternate plan. Did you know that they were going to use the pavilion with minimal cost? The, the, the yeah. picnic shelter. Picnic shelter. Yeah. They already so they already have a plan for what to do for the concerts and you're moving forward with all the contracts on the bands, right? 
Uh, David signed those contracts based on y'all's guidance when we left the last meeting, and they've gone back to the bands. We can inve uh, investigate the cost, but if, if you guys move forward with taking the top off, I just want us to be careful about getting that rhetoric out there of sales and people thinking that we're talking about what's over here because that won't work. Okay. The first thing that we need to do is eliminate whatever the structural deficiency is, and then we can worry about sales and other tops and stuff. But getting rid of the safety issues, number one. Do we agree? I, I agree. I still am hung up on this fiscal year versus next fiscal year because all the stuff I think we're talking about should get done before concert. I mean, it should be done this fiscal year. So if this is about next year, I'm, I guess I'm not sure what we should do, you know, long term. Because I assume sales are not a long-term well, solution. For it says fiscal year 24-25, but I would say it's going forward from this date. What are we going to be working on, even though it says that? And the pavilion is on our plate. Whether we do it next month or we do it next year, we have to come up with a plan for it. But I don't think we're in any big hurry because we have a workaround already. So I certainly think we at least need to wait for that report to come back before we move forward with any action. Again, back to the should do's, we should eliminate, we should move forward with um, corrective actions to eliminate that structural deficiency, which may likely be taking the top off. Uh, if we can't do it this year, then Honestly, I don't think that's a should do. I have anything that says amenity and parks and rec as a nice to have slash like to do. Well, I think it's a safety issue. It should be. But well, if we're not using it, there's not a safety issue. Well, do you want your goal then to be the plan for the pavilion, including funding requirements? Because you guys aren't really deciding, deciding today. So that could be your goal and then... That's what I had highlighted. With that. that would probably put the word create in front of it, like create a plan for the pavilion so there's an action. Does that work for everybody? Yep. And then what would you like to? Right. To should? I don't think it's a should do. It's nice to have. Yeah, I mean, look, okay. look at your definitions. I, I, and I'm assuming it's an amenity, not a, not a safety, because we're not going to take the risk. Right. So it's an amenity nice to have. So I've got create plan for the pavilion, including funding requirements, nice to have amenity. Yep. Yep. Okay, on block Q, under that we have ADA compliant bathhouse, boat parking, move towards completion and moving festivals to this location to ease scope of police department's work due to road closures, develop project-based plan on committees and public input, and site plan for block Q, including funding requirements. I think moving ahead with the bathrooms is a must do. Well, I don't see that as a must do. I mean, we're gonna do it, but it's not a must do. It's not even a should do. It's a nice to do. Because not, it's I'm, not required. It's not under our ADA <coughs> agreement. We have many bathrooms. Assistant I, manager. <coughs> I would just, as you guys are talking through this goal, remind you that the grant's going to be coming before mm -hmm. you, and it does have a timeline on it. So it's typically those development grants are 18 months, and you're probably going to be looking at signing it next month because they've told us it's on the way. So if you're going to accept the grant, you would be looking to accomplish it next budget year, which means you also have to put your stormwater in. So the 18 months is to get it done. That's typically what the timelines they put on development grants. Okay. I'm going to agree with Rick. It is a must do. Uh, the ADA requirements for a restroom, uh, the ones we have under the bridge are not adequate and cannot be made adequate. We need a nice restroom area, ADA, that meets ADA requirements. Uh, we, we don't want to move backwards. We want to move forward. We've got a grant to make this happen. And there's no need to uh, not make it happen. I'm sorry, that's it. It's a got to. 
it, I, I think you need to look at the definite. I mean, what happens to, if we don't do it? I'm not saying that we're not going to do it. I'm just saying that it should be categorized as a nice to have because if we didn't do it, we didn't. We are. We did. It's not on our agreement that we have to lawfully do it, right? That bathroom was not on that agreement. Does everyone agree with that? No. I mean, Tim can tell us that bathroom is not on your agreement, right? The Bridgewater agreement. Yeah, it's not on the Key Bridge. Mm -hmm. Right. So that makes it not a must do. Because if it was on there, then it's a must do. If yeah. we put in a new bathroom, right? But it's not on the agreement, so it's not a must do. Well, I still put it in the must do because the work's gone in, the grant's been applied for. It would be nicer than what we have. We can go around as to whether or not the bathroom's under the bridge or ADA compliant or whatnot, but it is still another facility. So for me, it's a must do. Maybe I could agree it with the should do, but it's not must. I mean, must yeah. is, is safety or, or by law. I think we need to maybe define what the must do, should do, nice to have is again, well, if we're going to go through it like that. And I, I think we're going to do it. Agree. Because we're going to have the money and we're, we're going to do it. So I agree. And, you know, even if we should, then we should. But then I, I just, even if it's we're, nice we're to just have, arguing we're over title here. Nice yes, sir. We're arguing over the definition of must. I think. Mr. Sorry, Smith's been trying to get the floor for a couple of minutes. Oh, let's, sorry. Give, let's give him 30 seconds or so sure. at least. Again, it's not on this required uh, Department of Justice mediation list. But if we don't do it, it will be on the next one. I feel, I feel it will be. This is something that we really need to do to just to protect, or no, just to make sure that the, the people that aren't as fortunate as we are that can walk and get around to it can have a, a, a restroom that they can use uh, that is ADA compliant. I mean, we, 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 why would we not do it? Again, I think it's a, I, mean, I want to keep it in the category really of must do. We've got a grant where it'll pay for the majority of it. It's just a, it's just kind of a, a no-brainer in my opinion. Mr. Evans. Okay, let me give you a history. I've given this lesson a couple of times and maybe it passed on by, but I'll go slow. When I got here, I condemned the pavilion. I don't know, it was the first week, first day, I don't know when it was. Part of the problem was with the pavilion was that beyond not being built the way it was supposed to be built, was it didn't meet the ADA requirements, and there were several deficiencies in it. One of them was it had egresses off the stage that the handicapped people could not get off of, so we had to add a handicap ramp to the right-hand side. There was, I had to bring in Laurel Wright, who at the time is probably, and still probably is, the most uh, educated person when it comes to ADA. I had to bring in an NCDOI investigator. We were allowed to use the bathrooms under the bridge, although, and we had to, to be very uh, creative with our access routes not to exceed the travel distance from the pavilion to those bathrooms for ADA compliance. Okay, so when it was reopened, it was reopened with that understanding that those bathrooms were on the verge of being too far, depending on where that access route was made from the pavilion, which is an amenity, which is an A4 outside assembly occupancy, which requires restrooms. So when we talk about what about ADA and what we need and what we don't need, uh, it, we need to, to think about where we put the stuff and where we have the stuff now. Um, and so I would be very careful to say that it's not something that we need or is not required if we are going to develop Block Q, you know what I mean, or if anything ever happens to the bathrooms that we have now. And, and I, I say this that we depending on how they allowed me to lay out the access route when I got here from the pavilion, which was not taken into account, was one of the few reasons why we were even allowed to use it was because they were lenient about that travel distance to that bathroom from that pavilion. 
it's written somewhere, it's in a report somewhere, but the report's 15 years old, and I don't know if I can find it, or it may, I may have stuffed it in the file, I don't know. So the but new bathroom is within the distance of the current pavilion? I, I, I believe that the, the access route that we would be able to take, because it, where, the travel distance that it has, and the fact that it's, the, the things it has to go through and around, I do believe, judging from my own investigation, that where we put those bathrooms would put us within that route configuration. It, it, you're remembering. Yeah. Like I remembered, yeah. which may mean that we're both wrong, but. Yeah. I was yeah. going to say, I hope it is. In other words, that if was, that's the requirement, I, then I, I hope it is. I don't know if anybody remembers or not, but I believe that there was discussion about how the bathrooms got on there. And if you'll go back and, and listen to the minutes, you'll, find, you'll hear that discussion about how the bathrooms ended up on Block people. And, and I'll just, I'll, I'll leave it at that. But, but the, the primary reason was, was that I think staff thought, in our department, that staff thought that bathrooms should go there because that was my first opportunity since 2010, the beginning of 2010, to get bathrooms that would comply with the North Carolina Building Code, the accessible routes, and the ADA requirements. Okay. And that's, the and that's a history you wouldn't have. That's a history nobody would have until I just spoke it. Thank you, Tim. There's no doubt in my mind if we build a bathroom, it's going to be ADA compliant. Correct. Um, and it's on the plan for Block Q, and if the pavilion goes in there, then I think they'll be even be closer. So that's not a debate. It's a fact. Um, you know, I, I guess I don't know, can, can they require us to build a bathroom versus just if we don't build it? That, that, I mean, granted, if we're going to build it, it'll be ADA compliant, but I don't know that we're required to build it. If you, if you put any kind of outside occupancy in there. So if we move the pavilion to Block Q, we're going to have to have a bathroom, bathroom there. It will be within the specific access route limitations. Yeah, the and that's the plan. Yeah. yeah. I, I, all I'm, all I'm asking is, are we forced to do it next year, or can we put it off for a year or two? Is it really I, a must I think next year? I think you're forced to do it next year because what, what Tim said is that, or what he didn't say is that, we were allowed to use the distance from the pavilion to the old bathrooms. He didn't say that it was correct, that it was within the distance. He said we were allowed to have it to be too far, because technically it's too far. Mr. Clemens. Uh, it, it, we, we got that clear. We met with DOT. I can't issue the permit. Who would I issue it to? We don't own the property, and unless they wanted to do renovations to their own property in the right-of-way, they would have to sign the, the permit. Well, their own rules don't allow stuff like that in the right-of-way. Gentleman sat right where he's at when we had the meeting and, and sit, looked me straight in the face because I said, well, who's going to get the permit? I can't. You can't issue permits for buildings to be built in right-of-ways. And you certainly can't issue permits for building. So if you're going to do a repair and it ends up being something of significance, even if it is a repair and requires a permit, who's signing the permit? I, I think that we're fortunate. I don't know, Greg, that you used to say we've all heard that saying, but I think we're very fortunate that those chickens haven't come home to roost yet. Yeah. We've just been fortunate. And I think with the grant available, that we need to go ahead and move forward on it. I agree with that, Rick. I'm not saying that we're not going to do the bathrooms because I'm sure we are going to do the bathrooms, especially with the grant available. But I was just saying it wasn't a must-do because must-do for me is safety and law. And so I would put it as a needs-to-do. That's all. And I'm, I'm sure we are going to do it because we're going to get the grant and we're going to move forward with it. But I would just say saying that it's not a must-do. That's all. So do you want it to say site plan for Block Q um, to include ADA compliant bathrooms and including funding requirements? 
store. Yeah. So, That's know. good. I mean, this is in front of Parks and Rec right now to have them and, yeah, weigh so in on other amenities. It would probably be mm -hmm. like the last one, just say create a site plan for Black Q, including funding requirements and the ADA compliant bathhouse. Yeah. Now, hold on a second. The bathrooms, and I hate to have this discussion over must who like to do, we, we're three-quarters of the way there on the bathrooms, Christy. Is that correct? I mean, we probably need the detailed designs to go out and bid it. We've got a grant coming. Uh, to me, it seems that we just, it, we need to move, this needs to be on David's list to accomplish this year. So you want to make them separate things? You want the Black U plan to be separate from the bathrooms? I mean, like we did before, we're, we had two things up there. Yes, I mean, we're we're not, we don't intend for the committee to change the bathroom design, do we? No. That, that's we not what they're doing, done. is it, Christy? No. Ah. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Y'all are rapid fire me on, rapid Sorry. firing on me a little bit here. So, yes. The architect that's working on Block Q gave a proposed bathroom plan to David and Tim to look at. I, that is a sketch, and I don't know if what they probably can answer more if it's 75% or not. I don't know that answer, but I will tell you that you, it's my understanding that y'all can't put a bathroom down without addressing stormwater, which is not addressed yet. So. I don't know that I can answer your percentage question about 75% there and what can be accomplished this budget year because we're back to the plan stage. Mr. Evans, you going to answer that? I have an approved stormwater plan in my office. There's been an approved stormwater plan for that site, and there's a set of bathrooms on there, but it's only a site plan. I don't think I've ever seen a specific set of design drawings for the bathroom. I have. Just only a site plan, and we reviewed it along with the board and other folks. But there is an approved stormwater plan um, that would either have to be changed or modified, uh, you know, if we make any changes. But, you, you know, you're, you, the guy that's handling that, will your other stuff will handle that as well. But, uh, you know I mean? I would assume that you wouldn't have to, that's a, that amenity sitting on site, and I'm sure the stormwater the majority of the stormwater is not tied to that bathroom, but tied to all those other impervious areas. You know what I mean? And it's probably not a big part of the stormwater. Does that make sense? So, I, I, guess I think what? I, I mean the question is, can can we split the bathroom and those properties and the grant that's tied to those properties from the remainder of Block Q, which is the yeah. bigger parcel? And, and maybe that's what you were saying: is treat them separately. I think I think I think you can. I think. They can just modify any changes they need to make based on the changes you want. They can just modify the stormwater plan. You know I mean? right. But what I'm saying is, is we don't have a bathroom design. we got a site plan. That's what we use for, for the stormwater. Right. And, and the plan all along was to do it in phases, um, and the bathroom being one phase of it. Um, and Christy, the grant doesn't cover 100% of the cost, right? So we need to have something in the budget. Are there some things already in the budget? No. The way that works is um, you wait to see if you're approved for it, and then the board has to accept it. So when it comes before you, you'd make a budget amendment. It's a reimbursable grant, so you'd have to budget the entire amount, and then you would get 75% back. The, the board has to appropriate funds. But we won't have going out to bid to know what it costs yet, have we? It's, it's based on the contract is based on the uh, package that we put forward with estimates and has been approved. So that's what the grant package is. And then we won't know what the specifics are until we go to bid. So, okay. so, so I understand, like the 75%, then they pay 75% of what we estimated. And if it comes in higher, we eat the difference. Okay. I hope we have a good estimate. <laughs> Well, and likewise, if you come in under budget, you only qualify for reimbursement for what you're under 75 percent of the under budget under amount. So budget, it's, it's yeah. definitely lopsided. Right. <laughs> okay. All right. So I'm still confused. Are we going to split the bathrooms I, I from the rest of Block should, Q? Yeah, I think we should. And the and the so it's a site plan for the 8A compliant bathrooms, including funding. 
No, it's create a site plan for Block Q, including funding requirements, and then it's also ADA com create or um, ADA compliant bathhouse. And both of them need to, or I think no. should do. Should do. Well, the bathroom is a. I'll agree to a. Sh should do, even though I don't think it is, but. The black queue is definitely like to, a, a nice to have. I mean, the town keeps running and everybody has a bathroom and everybody goes to the beach. If we don't have do anything to black queue, that's a nice to have. Okay, so what we're looking at is ADA compliant bathhouses should do and create a site plan for block queue, including funding requirements, nice to have. I'm good That'll with work. That. And they're both amenities. Both amenities. And I assume we can just, if it turns out that way, we can just do the bathroom and it just be on the parcels where the bathroom is and it have its own water or retention just for those parking spots for the bathroom. Or do they get commingled with the bigger parcel? Well, depending on how much development you're doing, but I would assume that if you're trying to do anything in the future, you just modify it. So keep the plan modified. So we'd have. Or, or you may have to do nothing. Um, under the peer, we've got develop long-term plan, create a committee with specific tasker to analyze peer options, must include cost analysis, and how each option would be funded long-term. Peer building, develop a long-term plan, does not have to be tied to the peer plan, need bid on repairs after changing scope of work, repair, replace, consider forming a committee, business plan for the peer properties, including funding requirements, and develop project plan for the peer property, including part of requirements, the desired end state of the peer property, phasing to accomplish, rough order costs, phase, and funding strategy. Da, 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 da. Yep, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> the elephant in the room. Yes. Um, so once again, I think some of this will be this fiscal year. I mean, I assume if we're going to set up a committee, we're going to set it up soon. Um, and then some will be next year. And then some will be years and years and years. Can I make one proposal first before we get into the peer itself? Can we have uh, the peer building develop a long-term plan be a separate thing from the actual peer? Or does everyone think they need to be together? I, I think they can be separate. They're not dependent on each other. What do you think? Well, I think having the committee to look at this is a good idea, uh, number one, because it needs to be what the community thinks, not what we think, to move forward with it um, and develop some type of plan. I guess you could have them separate. Um, uh, uh, like block they could be. I guess I don't. I yeah, I just, I, I don't. It seems like we're getting in the weeds here. Yeah. Uh, um, I got, I got a, a just a fundamental question here because we're talking about, and I, I know that y'all, we, us, are struggling how to, how to deal with this, but the, <clears throat> and I, I look, I look at these goals as they transmute into the budget as to what am I responsible for? How do you see? Who is the responsibility for moving whatever it is that's decided on, on the, the final composition of the peer? If a peer committee is created, I'm not the boss of the peer committee. I, and, right. and so how, how does that integrate with the staff work and the town budget? I, I don't know. It's just what, something what, what's a typical it, committee? The committee reports to the board. Board directs you. Is that yes. how it works? I mean, I, I, I wouldn't imagine this to be any. It, 
like the parking committee was, or you know, we've got other committees we've had. Um, I would say the staff is on hold until the committee comes back with the recommendation, just like the board is on hold on the pier until the committee comes back with the recommendation. Can a committee give us prices? Well, and and okay, I'll I'll, I'll hold that no. question. My question is: is is this committee going to be a committee that does not include any staff members who have? unique specific information that would be relative to it i'm not pitching for inclusion on that committee i don't <laughs> i don't i don't know that who you're going to get to be on the committee that can flavor the sauce of what that committee goes through with the town's perspective and local government rules regarding finance construction Contracting, bidding, et cetera, et cetera. I, I, I don't know. I, no, I think that's probably a good, a good and add. Again, that I'm not, from, and I'm not from the staff should be on the committee. On I, yeah, I thought staff was always on all committees. Was there a committee without staff? Well, I believe there's one in ordinance that says that staff is specifically prohibited from being on committees. Maybe not. I don't remember if we took that out or not. Okay. I feel like that was, and then it. Went away. Okay. Well, we didn't change any of that. If you're talking about the release, no, 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 no. no, no. It, it's, Thank you. Thank you. No, 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 no. no. I, I didn't mean to infer that. <laughs> well, oh, the official well, member of the committee versus advisor consultant. consultant. Okay. Well, it's kind of the same thing, I guess. I mean, from perspective of what the committee's outputting. If a staff member's on it as a consultant, then they're inputting into the committee, right? I, I'd assume so. And I certainly don't, you know, in, didn't intend that to be solved here, but it's something that right. came up no, and no, out. that's a good point. Good so point. basically what you're saying, David, is that you don't know how to get a marching order out of all this stuff we listed on the pier. And I believe until we have a committee formed with direction for it, we can't give you a marching order at this point. And what we're trying to do here today is to give you your priorities of what's going to get worked on next year. So I don't know that we can, we should move on to this till we figure out the committee and we should move forward in figuring out the committee. But that's, Again. we're not going to figure that out today. Yeah. Ultimately, I just need to be told what to do. Right, and, and, and we can on this one. Here. I don't see that here. Sure. So should we skip it or should we say that we want to create a committee? I mean, it's not only for... I don't think we can It's not only for David, it's for us too. Well, yeah. To decide what we're going to be working, what we're going to be working on as a board. Well, I think we need to establish a peer committee and go from there. I agree. And I think Rick. staff should definitely be involved, um, whether... I don't know what the precedent is for being on the committee versus being a consultant to the committee. Again, how can a, what is a committee going to do if they, if they don't have any pricing or any idea what stuff's going to cost? If we're not going to rebid the pier or and change the scope, how are they going to know, well, maybe that's not a good idea. Oh, that might be a better idea. I mean, you, 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 there's too much ambiguity between all of it. I mean. What's the committee going to do? Sit around and talk about what they'd like to have? That's great, but what's it cost? No, they need to have what it's cost. The, to move forward on this in any, whether there's a committee or not, which I've been on those committees, and uh, I've, the, when we dissolved the committee, I, I, I said I didn't think it was, uh, it really did that much good. Uh, town staff is very adequate on uh, taking care of stuff. But we, uh, but we definitely need to uh, go out and get some, uh, get a new bid on uh, making repairs and changing the scope of the work so we can make a educated decision instead of just having and spinning our wheels on a committee that still not going to know what the cost of anything is. And that's it. For the committee to be effective, I think they'd have to be empowered to be able to go retain an engineer, get get estimates, because you're right, we've got to have good numbers to base decisions. Mm -hmm. So, you know, for them to come up with a 
business plan for the pier, they would need to have outside help. A committee can. Well, let's let's, let's, you, let's, you, let's, you, let's talk would, about let's let's hold, talk hold, about that. Hold a minute. <clears throat> we need some direction, please, from you, town manager, to remind all of us of what we are capable of dismissing and passing to unelected committees. Um, I, I'm not supposed to talk about it, but you can talk about it and, and, and explain the obligation, the liabilities, and so forth of the elected officials versus just appointing somebody to go out there and do something. If you will educate us on that, please. Well, the only um, official that's authorized to disburse money is the finance officer. Okay, you you cannot appoint a committee and say, y'all can go spend this money. It, it's it, it doesn't work that way. So, um, to say that they're empowered to go hire help, that does it. It can't be that. It can't be that way. The board has to authorize either through the budget and delegate it to a staff member. Or the board has to authorize it straight. Did I say that right, Daniel? Yeah, okay. yeah. but there's <clears throat> there are only bond. There's only certain bonded people that are authorized to disperse funds, and that would not be appointed committee members. Understood. Um, Thank you. I, I think the issue is we need good estimates. We don't want to, you know, go out for RFPs on things just to go fishing for numbers. Um, the board would need to authorize the retention of somebody that could give us an engineering firm or whoever would give us a good estimates, and that information would then be available to the committee. That's what I just said, sir. Thank you. Okay. So to do that, we're going to have to get a bid. No, you no. get the engineer to estimate it, and we can and talk about that offline if you want. Yeah, because we're talking about a 20-year estimate versus a one-year. That's what, if you look at the, you know, this is the one that I vote. Create a committee with specific tasks here to analyze peer options. Must include cost analysis, including maintenance and operating costs, and how each option would be funded. Repair, replace, and sell. So... I mean, we're looking, and the next one on the next page is develop a long-term plan. So that's what I would expect the committee to do, come back and say, this is how much it would cost to repair it for the next 20 years and maintain it. This is how much it would cost to build a new one that will last 50 years, or this is what would happen if you do nothing. You got me confused. I'm sorry. Can I make a recommendation here? Could we just table this and move on because we're not clear on it? Sure. Would, would that be okay with everybody because there's confusion here? David is not getting what actions he needs to look forward to executing this year. Um, is everybody all right with that? I'm okay for today. I think we're going to have to address this for the budget. Yeah. So we can't. I think we have to have more discussion. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, the next one would be repair the parkour marsh between Greensboro and Scotch Bonnet Drive. Consider move to area not flooding. Uh, I'm okay if we keep that on there, but it's a nice to have. Agreed. So leave it and nice to have? Yeah, yep. and it's an amenity. Okay. Yep. Then the next one is consider a location to have pickleball courts to free the basketball. Oops, should say court, my bad. Court. Depends on how you play basketball. <laughs> <laughs> I would say that's the same as the previous one. It's, um, I would leave it on. <coughs> nice to have but I would say that maybe the Black Q committee should consider that Parks and Rec definitely and so amenity also then yep 
And then uh, assess existing parks and rec facilities, playground equipment for maintenance, repair, or replacement. That would be the same. Yeah, it's almost like you could group those three if you could come up with a nice, you know, recreational facilities or something. Because yeah. we're talking about the park course, pick a ball, and, and playground. So it's all parks and rec kind of. I, I see them a little different, Tom, because the third bullet has to do with stuff that already exists, and the other ones are, well, the, the park course is a repair. Um, so. The location for the pickleball, that's a that's a new asset to me, but that's a nuance. I think they're all worth having on the yep. potential okay. list. Agreed. Okay. Uh, then we're moving to the general tab, and the first one says ADA compliance, complete mediation work, consideration of other areas needing upgrades, construction of other ADA compliant amenities, Complete all obligations per the agreement and completion of ADA required projects. So, see, I would see that that's a must do. Yep. Do you want to consolidate all that stuff? Yeah. <laughs> I just, uh, completion of ADA, well. Y'all are talking about other than the Key Bridge Foundation, right? Right. Yeah. The, yeah. Because when you say completion of all ADA required projects, how about complete all obligations for the agreement? As That's the, the must do. Yeah. Perfect. So, we, yeah. Are we putting in any, I mean, other bathrooms other than the ones that are potentially any, blocked? Any, anything that would be required under, under uh, the local building code is going to require, require ADA compliance. So, any project that you have that would be triggered by the local building code would then require compliance. Would automatically require compliance. Okay. Any That's new projects. Said, any projects you got, yep. you have to meet it anyway. So, so are we anything doing... Out, anything outside the Key Bridge Foundation that we do has to meet the ADA requirements. Right. Since I've been here, we've been making it with me. Yep. It's the old facilities that were issued. So are we assessing other things besides what ended up in the agreement to see if we need to make ADA upgrades to other areas of the town? I believe I said it Okay. Uh, we've been, like I said, we've been looking at it and we've been repairing stuff. We've been bringing it in compliance. Good. Those portions that need to be done of the game. And we do have, uh, we do constantly monitor and record those things that we see need to be brought into compliance. Good. Uh, that belong to the town. That's been in the town so now, if somebody was to upgrade a commercial building, uh, we'd like to put in a ramp and that kind of stuff. Like a cap, cap, chef. So this bullet is really the key bridge project. Yes. And it's a must do. And it's a must do. And I, I wrestled with is it an amenity? Is it a core service? That's where I kind of got. I say it's a core service. Okay. I mean. Okay. So complete all obligations per the agreement must do core service. Yep. Yep. Okay, monitor the proposed changes to inlet hazard areas and how this could impact property values, construction, and insurance rates. David? <laughs> um, this inlet hazard area issue has been going on for 15 years, I believe, um, if, if not longer. It's just where I, I intercepted or came into view on it. Uh, yes, monitoring the proposed changes and, and monitoring how it could impact property values, construction, insurance rate. I, I would feel better with an active leader that says, and um, assist when appropriate to scope the inlet hazard area recommendations to the benefit of Holden Beach. Sure. Got that, Heather? Yes. Now, I don't know if they will be able to influence or have any effect at all, but we've been engaged for the last 15 years on that. And 
Maybe that's not the exact verb action and go get it, but at least there's something more than just watching something happen and seeing what it do does to you. I'm a yep. reactive kind of person. I want to make sure if there's an opportunity for us to insert ourselves to the benefit of Holden Beach that we, we do that. Because that's what I plan to do, so y'all need to tell me not to do that nope. if you know no, what No, we're not. Right. Okay. Perfect. But from a budget perspective, are there dollars that are needed for that, or is that um, part of? Probably some not, travel not a, and not whatnot. Not a tangible, yeah. not a buy kind of thing. There's so not be, a tangible. it be included in the admin or whatever yeah. budgets? Yeah. So would it really even make this list then? I think that in the hazard area is a singular um, issue that it well, needs to be in that. front of the board. Okay, and that would be a should do? Yeah. So monitor the proposed changes to the inland hazard area and how this could impact property values, construction, and insurance rates, and assist when appropriate to scope IHA recommendations to the benefit of Holden Beach. Should do. Yeah, yep. and I, I guess I'm thinking protecting property. Yeah. From a, okay. Then we've got 796 Ocean Boulevard West property. Develop a plan. Based on financial analysis, consider selling and take action on. That's nice to have. Mm. Yeah. I, had, I think that the should do. And I had I had possibly put it on the March meeting agenda. But well, I don't see anything catastrophic happens if it's not a must do for David to do. You've probably got your ten items already. Well I didn't say it was a must do. Uh, well, that's all I was saying. It was a nice to do, or like to do. I mean, we need to do something. I'm with you. We could probably get it done this fiscal year. Um, and, and I guess from a budget perspective, it would just be if we decided to keep it and we'd need to spend money on it. But if we decided to sell it, it's a plus to the budget, not a negative. That goes into the sewer budget as a positive? Yeah, that's correct. They own it. And aren't we going to be looking for money to finish the second number two station? That would be less of a loan we'd have to go out and get is what I'm well, you, you gotta edging towards. You, you got to remember the um, 796 was financed. So oh. it's it's got a debt component to it. Hmm. guess I missed that. In the right? I didn't see it either. We is through. it in a in different? Yeah. Oh, so it's in the loan for the number three? It's, it's, yeah, that three. transaction happened at the same time. There were two debt instruments, one taxable and non-taxable, and the 796 is the taxable component of that debt. One more reason to sell it. <laughs> Town manager, the assistant town manager, you have the floor. And I believe as part of that uh, paperwork and agreement, it says if you guys are going to do anything with that property that you have to notify the bank and get permission. Mm -hmm. To sell it? Mm -hmm. Do anything. Do anything. Okay, I mean, that doesn't sound like a big deal. Anyway, I have it as a should do. If you guys want to debate it, that it's a nice to do, and I think we should do it sooner than later. Especially if we're paying I'm with you. I mean, it. It's just sitting there vacant right now, right? Not bringing in anything or. Well, we <clears throat> we've entertained ideas on or notions on you know getting a tenant in there, but because of the uncertainties with what's going to come of it we've just stepped back from attempting that 
Yeah, and I think I did see a hundred thousand dollars in repair in the budget that we already spent last mm -hmm. year. No, we didn't spend. Year? We didn't spend. I think it's budgeted, but not spent. Well, we, I think we spent a hundred thousand last year. Well, we put in new AC, painted it, right? I don't remember the amount, but there was funds spent to do the back deck, yeah. the um, AC unit, and painted. Yeah. yeah. And that was in last year's. Yeah. And that was last year or this current year? Current year. No, I think it was last year's budget that it was completed, if I remember from looking at the. Anyway, it's costing us money, so we should do something with it sooner than later. Yeah, I'm with you. I mean, put it on the agenda for March. Let's do it. So would you like it to be the take action on 796 one and then um, do, should do? That's what I'd like. Yeah. AV system, update meeting communication system. If OWL doesn't work, find a way to improve live streaming so people can hear the meeting. Uh, implement a professional AV streaming system for public meetings and improve audio video at town meetings. Do you, can I just go ahead and grab that one? If you wanna just make it improve audio video at town meetings, we'll bring back a quote for a professional. If you don't like it, we can move on from there. Perfect. Perfect. Yep, yep, good. So that's a should do? Should do. And, and yeah, I had that for March possible agenda. And I don't know if that's an amenity or a core service. <laughs> we probably need to serve our public. We can think of core service. Oh, and that, uh, 796, I've got should do, but we didn't break it down further if you guys want to do that. No, I thought you did. Take action on 796. Yeah, no, I think, it, you mean the amenity? I, I have it as an amenity. I don't know what it's, it's oh, not part I, of our core service. I don't do that. Okay, maybe. Does that work for everybody, amenity? Well, let's talk about core services that building was bought under the auspices that it was a sound protective measure for the sewer lift station now I don't know if that's part and parcel of a core service but it does have a technical relationship to the lift station next door uh, to me the question is if we got rid of that building would it impact our ability to provide sewer service <coughs> Would it? <laughs> so leave it as amenity? Yeah, but if, if it's not going to impact our ability to provide water, sewer, other services. And then for the AV system, um, should do core service? Is that what you guys decided on? Or? Well, I, I wrestle, I don't know. Because, I mean, to me, that's part of our governing services, but. Um. I mean, you could almost argue that that's a must do because that's open meeting laws. If people can't hear what you're saying, then you're violating those. Right. But I'll do should do core, whatever you want. Let's just do a core service must, should do. We haven't been doing it. <laughs> okay. Then well, we've, we've been yeah. providing what we've been equipped with. <laughs> yep. Okay. Communications, review and improve the town website. Ocean Isle has a town projects tab that would be a good addition to our website. Other improvements, improve town website to provide project information such as drawings, project status, updates and schedules, master plans, emergency operation plan, land use plan, et cetera, policies, other investigate methods for obtaining more property owner feedback such as water bill surveys, professional surveys, updated town website, and improved communications with citizens. It sounds like AV, kind of core service should do. I think it should do, but she needs to consolidate. Yep. Update town website, the last bullet maybe. But keep in mind all the other stuff that's like yeah that would specific. work. I mean, we'll have to keep that. Last bullet, and you Good said test. should do. Yeah, I'd I'd say like AV if it's core service, then it's core service. All right. Sorry, down. Okay. Then on the next page, we've got beach 
nourishment, develop a long-term beach <coughs> nourishment management plan, including funding, review the results of the core CSRM study and update of the CIP accordingly, inclusion of beach nourishment plans and funding in the CIP. I've got that as protecting property, even though it's the beach is an amenity, but the CSRM is very much to protect property. And what's that a must do or should do? Um, I'm not using the same code as you, so I'm not sure where that falls. Um, I, I don't know there's a legal requirement. I mean, we're in deep trouble if we don't do it, but there's no legal requirement that we've Gotta do it. Let's call it a should do for now. I mean, it'll get on the list. Dave's got plenty of must do's already. And you want to keep all three? I would use the last bullet because we talked about this when we did the CIP of what we might do. Yeah, the first and last okay bullets are similar. Okay with that. Yeah, but we had talked about the yeah. ability to even do, you know, do a 10-year, 15 is really stretching it. We we talked about that when we went through the CIP items. So I would go with the third bullet and move on. And should do, and then what's the last part of that? You mean protecting property? Yeah. Protect, gotcha. Yeah. Protecting property. Paid Parking program changes. Review rates, amount of fines in line with the other islands. Extend the season year-round. Review and update paid parking program. And then all the stuff in the front. <laughs> so, so my question is, I mean, are we already locked in for this season or? This season we are because the passes have already gone on sale. Yeah, but that doesn't mean we are, for that we are, but not for the hourly, weekly. So it doesn't start till April 1st. And we're not in line with the other islands on those. One of them we are and one we're not. Anyway, I had that possibly put on the March agenda too to talk about that as a something we can do sooner than later. And there's no budget with this, right? I mean, it's just, we just well, no, I mean, there's a budget, revenue impact. I mean, it is an yeah. impact the budget because yeah. it's revenue. Yeah. So the third tab kind of encompasses all of them. Does that work for everybody? Yes. And then what? I would say it should do. I'd say it's nice to have, um, but I'll defer to Rick. You've been the parking guy. Well, again, the original idea behind the paid parking was to uh, generate revenue to re re repair the pier and pay for the pier property. And uh, mm. again, I'm uh, not against year-round parking. I think it would... Uh, benefit us but again if we're not going to do anything to uh, to the pier for the next four or five years I think we should just end paid parking completely if we're not going to so, do so it safe, was tied to no it pier? wasn't no. it was wasn't never sure. it was started way before that even talked about buying the pier that's not actually accurate y'all attended the meetings you don't know otherwise but just oh. All I'm going to say about it, carry on. You're going to do what you want to do anyway. Then let's make the paid parking program changes a nice to do and go with the third bullet. And then the description. Is that an amenity also? Or? Yeah, let's just do that. Lobbyist review cost benefit analysis. That's an amenity. I think. Well, this is directly related to the budget. If you're spending money on something that you're not getting the value out of, how is that an amenity? Uh, okay. I, I guess I was viewing it as if we didn't have it, there wouldn't be any. It, that's what we got to figure out. Is what, what that's, what I'm, that's what I would th yeah. think the cost-benefit analysis would tell us yeah. whether we're getting our money's worth. So we should do that. 
So that'd be more core service part of the yeah maybe. okay core service should do. Okay, so keep it. It should do core service. Yep. Continue to support and monitor the Lockwood Folly Inlet access to the ocean. What? Is, what? I know some of the, we don't have to keep everything on this list either. If we decide that that shouldn't be there, then we can take it off. I guess I'm, I need to understand it better. I mean, it's kind of like monitoring the inlet hazard area. Is that all we're doing or are we going to fund, does this have dollars associated with it? Yes. Okay. This is dredging when the, our share of dredging, right? Mm -hmm. So that should be a must do. Be, uh, I'm sorry. I'll be corrected here. What if we didn't do it? What if let's, we didn't do it? Let's have some input from the assistant town manager, please. Yes, it is dredging, but staff would also encourage you to think about this being your third earmark request because the million dollars that we used two years ago as an earmark will not get us through the dredging cycle next year based on what's left in the balance of the Corps' O&M budget. So we only had two already is that where we left it the last time we we didn't yes. have a third because we were talking about fire but then we couldn't get fire so mm -hmm. this is your suggestion as adding this as a third sounds good yeah mm -hmm. and we just found out that the core is winchestered on their federal appropriation for lockwood folly inlet so that's they, it's totally appropriate to bring it to you yeah they ha have maybe four hundred thousand dollars left but it's not enough to at, at the daily rate and usually they're here 15 days a time it's not enough to get you through a year so we would suggest that be your third year mark request and so that wait, would be that would be um, um, to have money put in the core's budget for the operation of their uh, the core fleet and any other contracted operations that they would need Okay, so do we have to do anything to get you to put that as our third earmark <clears throat> consensus? Yeah, so I guess I'm, this is somewhat similar to beach nourishment in that we know that there's going to be ongoing costs associated with dredging and we ideally would put them in the SIP or something to have a plan for when we're going to need dredging dollars. I'm just trying to compare it to the beach nourishment. Uh, unless I'm mistaken, I believe that's in your capital improvement plan. It shows one year uh, at about the $383,000. That's when we get the widener, and the next year at about eighty-five, because traditionally that's what we've spent. So since we have the widener this year, your next year cost would be eighty-five. Um, that would be in the budget proposal to you, not knowing what cost will shake out per cubic yard per daily rate but then also even though you put the 85 in as a placeholder you ask for earmark so maybe you don't have to use the 85 so it's in the set yeah it was there i remember okay as a separate line and it's not under yeah beach renovation so is there a to do or is this just no, I do think, what well, we're doing yeah it's gonna, <laughs> Just yeah, confirm third that. Earmark. Okay. So we probably don't need to leave that on, or do we leave it yes. on? Because we have I, money going toward some amount that we don't know. Well, you're going to need to put some in the budget. Just because it's in the SIP doesn't mean it won't be in the budget. Okay. So how would we want to categorize that one then? Should do? Yeah. Do we want to change the wording on that, David, since it's kind of passive support and monitor? He knows what he's, you know what you um, got to do with that, right? Yeah, sure. If, then it should be okay. I, I, yeah, I, I mean, it's fine. So we're leaving it as a should do. Um, then we go down to the finance budget, and we've got balance the budget without raising taxes, no tax increase. That's the goal. Um, 
I guess I'm getting tangled up in our goals versus priorities versus objectives versus <laughs> classifications. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, we already had this in our goals, right? When we did do our goals. Yeah. I'm not sure we need to leave it on here for objectives. I don't know. I could be convinced that it's... Well, I, I think, I mean, to me it's cleaner. This is our list of objectives, what we plan to accomplish, and that's one of the fundamental goals we've got. The first two, maybe more, are our, our goals. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, I'm okay with leaving them as goals. I just see goals and objectives as different things. So you want me to take it off this list? Uh, I, I, I mean, we have to go back and look at the notes from the last meeting, but I thought we'd pass goals, we'd pass priorities, we'd, you know, we'd, we'd voted on what our goals were, what our priorities were. Yeah, I mean, do you want me to write goal next to it and leave it yep, there? That's fine. Yeah, that's good. fine. The first two, I think he's saying yeah. for those. Uh, maintain, require, I'm sorry, I, did you guys say something after I said Well, that was, a, that's another that's, goal. That's another goal. Okay, the next one, okay. Redefine policy for the capital reserve fund for beach renourishment to restrict its use solely for physical beach renourishment and define the annual revenue streams for implementation during fiscal year 24-25. Okay, so this is part, we could almost put this under beach nourishment because it's the funding part of the program. Um, yeah, because we right now for beach nourishment, I think we took that bottom bullet, which was inclusion of beach nourishment plans and funding in the SIP, and this is the See, funding part. You I, mean, cross that I, off I don't know. Do we want to call it out separate? or? I would leave it, but move it up there under beach nourishment, maybe. Yeah, maybe combine it with the The beach nourishment one. Gotcha. Transfer money from the general fund to the beach and inlet CRF as defined by the existing policy. Adherence to fund balance policy for funding beach and <coughs> inlet capital reserve. So I have that as a must do since that's a policy we should be doing that. I know we talked to David about this before and you said you hadn't done it for the last year or even the year before. Is, is that something we can have on an agenda item to... And you're working on a budget amendment. Okay, perfect. Okay. For March. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. So must do? Yep. Do you guys want to categorize it further? Um, well, I mean, beach it, nourishment is protecting property, so it's part of the beach nourishment. Property. Okay. Replenish beach and inlet fund at an aggressive rate, adhere to the existing fund balance policy, and be part percentage rule. I think that's the same thing. Yeah, yeah that's those, redundant. Those are the same. Yeah. Okay, we'll redundant. cross that on out. Upgrade the budget message document to include details and pie charts on relative department and types of expensive expenses, as well as full details on debt service schedule. <laughs> I think we, we talked about that in some of our meetings about different graphs and charts. Um, I mean, this is just tied to the budget message. Yeah, because the next one I remember we talked to about the monthly reports, yeah. and this kind of feeds into that. Yeah, and, and to me they're all related to communicating, you know, part of the whole helping people understand our budget, helping people understand um, spending. Yeah, and actually the next one's part of that too. Easier to understand more financial reports. Okay, so we're leaving them, but how do you want me to categorize them? That's... So... No. Financial reports don't have anything to do with the budget message. Right. It's just more about how you're showing the finances. So one is monthly, one is the budget message. So right. that would be not until the very end when you do your budget message. So it really depends on if you could do 
I mean, I was had advisor should do, but I don't know if you if you really even can do it. Is the question? I can write the budget Daniel. message pretty much uh, any way that it needs to be written. At one point in time, we had ad infinitum uh, detail relating to debt service schedules in there, and then there was a desire to be more general, delete that, and go to a, a, a Windows or a, an app picture-based type of budget message. So that's been done. Um, I mean, the way that that is written there, that's pretty self-explanatory to me, if that's what you want. But I think we can... We but should, but, I, but when we talk one. about better communications and we talk about easier to understand mm -hmm. but more detail, sometimes that's dichotomous. When you have too much information, you can't understand it. So, you know, communication's a challenge regardless of what arena you're in. <clears throat> so do you want me to leave it on there, or do you just, he's got the direction? I, I, I understand go. what it means. Do you want me okay. to leave it? Leave it, no. Right, should do, is that? Yeah, if you can. We'll give it the best shot. <laughs> so then the next one would be the up, update the monthly management report at the board meeting to include bar graph of last year, monthly year-to-date spend compared to this year, monthly year-to-date. Yeah, and that's really combined with the one below it, kind of same thing. Well, could I segue a moment there on that particular thing? Mm hmm Yes, sir. Just because uh, Daniel and I were talking about the practical um, execution of that and, um, you know, for financial reports, do we need to have the finance officer uh, doing that or would it be more suitable for perhaps that type of information to be captured in a, um, what's the thing called for the consent agenda? Consent agenda type information. Because... Um, if you're waiting for me to give the financial report all the way down to the end, it may, you know, everybody may be asleep. So, you know, what's the, what's the, well, that, where, I guess my thought was this was more focused on what you post on the website. The monthly financials that get posted to the website would just have more of these graphical bar chart. Okay. See, not, I totally missed. Not I, me. I, that's I not what I meant. I, I, I want to see it in the monthly thing so that everybody gets it every month when they get okay. their package. Okay. <laughs> where where do we want to put that on the agenda is my question. It doesn't matter to me as long well, as it's in the package and people can see it easily. Consent agenda makes it easier for you. Nobody has to talk to it. Yep, that's fine. Yeah. And, and then if this there's questions, you can always up. pull it out. Perfect. Yep. When you go yep. to agenda approval time, mm -hmm. you can always pull consent agenda items out to be talked to during the agenda. And if it's in the packet, then I guess it doesn't need to be on the, I mean, it'd be on the website via the packet, so. Okay. Heather, you had a comment, I think. No, it's fine. You sure? Yep. No, I'm okay. <laughs> David, is that easy? Can do. Okay. When can we start that? Probably March should be best. Yeah, that, uh, Perfect. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. No, you don't have to do it today. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so do you want to take those two items off since it's really board meeting stuff? I think yeah. so, yeah. 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 Then 90% budget execution, including contingency items, spend what you asked for. Yeah, that's just me. You know, you, get, you guys ask for a budget, we give you a budget. Sometimes there's a lot of money left over. Just let's see if we can execute what we're asking for. And that's that's just a goal. Okay. Um, I get that. <laughs> but having um, done tours in the federal government, that's got a, a little different nuance to it than what I think here at the local government, because that that translates to use it or lose it. 
in the, in no, the federal go- in no, the federal no, no, no. government it does. Yeah, well that doesn't tra- not here. No, yeah, well, that's not. I know, I know what we're talking about there yeah. is execute the program. Yeah, that's all that is, David. That's I understand. Use it or lose it, because inevitably that will <laughs> distill down to uh, department level, and it'll be painful. A uh, desire to Winchester the budget. But. I guess this is kind of along the line, too. You know, we've got all these should-dos here, and I don't know that it's within the capacity to get them all done. Right. It's a lot. So, so we have you know, to- if, if we do a budget to do all these things and it's just not within the capability, then maybe we don't need to buy it off so much. But that's just the goal. So we had some goals up there, Heather. Can we just add this to the goal? Those yep. first two bullets, and then that will be a goal also? Sure. Is that okay? Here? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that's not something that, I mean, that's uh, what it is. Okay, then assess water and sewer reserve funds to ensure they can satisfy short and long-term needs. Yeah, that's me again. I don't know enough about those funds or what the long-term needs are. Just give them a look and see if the money we're putting away for the rainy day is suitable. Given the increased cost of everything, what Chris anticipates we may need to repair, replace, possibly upsize, things of that nature, just a a look at it to see if it's adequate. Does that make sense? This appears to be similar to, you know, we talked about the SIP going out maybe 15 years and having you know, for beach nourishment and other ones, you know, here's the funding that's needed to meet these requirements going forward. Is that? It it ties into the SIP, but just to go take a look at it. I mean, things are much more expensive these days. Um, I Things are getting older. I don't know if we're reaching capacity limits. Um, just to give it a look and see is what we're putting away for future capital projects under these reserve funds sufficient for what we think's coming given our, what we know today about the price of things like pump station two being so expensive. Okay, so, I mean, is a one-time analysis to to come up, because the SIP to me is kind of the long-term financial plan and we got a bucket out there to spend money, and we may push it down, we may move it up, okay. but it's our vision. This is, not, is this just an analysis of... This is my goal to put a little emphasis on water and sewer because it's critical infrastructure to make sure we give it a good look. And we're doing what we need to so we don't get caught short should something arise or we have to increase something. Okay, so it's more a one-time yeah. analysis. Okay. Yeah. So do you want to classify it as a should do or a goal or... Let's let's make it a goal. I feel we've asked a lot of staff. <clears throat> then the next title is policies and procedures, and we have an overall review of personnel policies must be undertaken with the intent to propose changes that will improve staff retention and development. That one's not mine. David, what do you think? I mean, it's your I, staff I, and stuff. Do you think there's anything that needs to be done at this point? No, I do Then let's not. take it off. Let's take this off, correct. Then succession planning for town staff. That one was mine because I hear all these people saying I'm retiring in three years, four years, and just want to make sure we got our bases covered if, if some very key resources are actually going to retire in the short term, what's the plan? So, well, putting it out there. Since individuals uh, personal retirement plans are personnel um, in, or it's personal personnel information um, it's not something that's appropriate for public discussion. Agreed. Okay. Then we've got Evergreens balance the budget. 
I think we had that in the goals. That's yeah, goal. you can. Yeah. That's, that's by law, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so what I'll do is I will make this into another piece of paper that takes all the changes, and I'll bring it to the next workshop. And I think we had questions on the next workshop. Exactly what. You want me to go? Okay. Yeah, go <laughs> Wait, can I just ask you first, though? Are you going to put, like, must do and then that and then should do and then the list and then nice to have and then the list? Yeah, I'll change the title. So it's yeah, and that way now. we can start prioritizing in, in each, each of those. Yes, if that works for everybody. Yep. Thanks. Okay, so um, I'll bring it back to the next budget meeting, which looks like it is on March 8th. And I guess we were talking and we're working on it, but what exactly for the department input and budget request? That's the next little subtitle that we're on for the month of, month of March. Are we looking to get our budget worksheets with our actual expenses, or are you looking for us to come and give us your big request and kind of list like if Jeremy wants a detective, you want the detective, you want his radios? What are you looking from us for us for next week? Is what we're well two weeks from now. Two weeks. Mm -hmm. Could you read that again? What was the description you've got on the this? The description of the title says department input and budget requests. So to be honest, on we were Christy and Chris are up first. And they've been going through and looking at what they're looking at, but we don't usually do it this early, so it'd be pretty loose. So we didn't know if you were looking at more of a just a general summary of what we're doing, or do you want the actual budget format from us? I want what you want for next year. But like just as kind of like a list as to this is what we want, this is how much we're expecting it to be? Or are you trying yeah. to get his actual expense budget worksheets that we usually develop? And we're, we're ahead of the, we're, yeah. I, I see it as a step before the worksheets, but it's, you know, we've gone through, this is what it was last year, this is where we're at year to date, here's where we think we're going to be, so now we're starting to look forward and say we think this is going to go up, or you know, not not at the line spreadsheet level, but... Just picture. the big, like... Big yeah. ticket item. Bigger ticket mm. item. You know, we're going to have something that we anticipate coming, and here's what it is, and here's the magnitude of it, and I'm, I mean, that's my thought. <laughs> like, I was throwing Jeremy into the bus, but if you look at the governing body, honestly, I don't have any requests, so mine wouldn't... You're not looking for the line-by-line line at this point, are you, or...? I was, but maybe that's not yeah. realistic because, yeah, I mean, if you don't have anything, then I would expect your budget's going to be pretty much the same as last year. Right, like governing body, admin, uh, we're all simple. Tim, Jeremy, all of us are going to be pretty simple. It's Chris and Jeremy, <laughs> or Jeremy, you, Christy, and Chris that are going to have the more bigger ticket items to... There ain't no to way go. I can make that schedule one by one and then we just don't like we don't have yeah. insurance is not prepared yet it's too early like we're working on our quote like we don't have okay. the main numbers yet is we're just trying we want to deliver what you want but we're just trying to make sure we know what you want <laughs> well it, it's what I'm hearing is is what maybe perhaps we wanted particularly based on what Chris says is it's not appropriate to get it at the next meeting what we typically do, what we've done for as long as I can remember, is we usually go in and we do the departmental requests, and they give them to David, to Daniel, whoever's working on it. But then we'll, you have a revenue workshop coming up. So they need to make everything balance the revenues and the expenses. So it makes more sense to just tell you what the requests are, but then to bring the sheets back when we've already talked about what revenues we're expecting. Would it make more sense to change it to revenue? To move up the revenue. Yeah, I'm just asking thought. you on the 8th, because we haven't talked about that at all. Would it make more sense to do, mm. and that gives them more time? No. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Chris, did you have something you're trying to say? Uh, that's moving it up a whole month. No, no, yeah. we, we can't. Let's, we, we, we're not going to be able to have revenue. In two so years. it's too early in the year for that, but looking, if I understand, Heather, we could look at the bigger ticket items, and we, if there's, yeah. We I, normally get that to 
David earlier anyways before okay. they actually go through and get all the numbers and stuff. So that's actually keeping in line with our normal process. We're just kind of giving you a brief of, you know, if there's something that Christy puts in there that you guys completely don't agree with, it would actually make sense to tell us now before we try to go and balance Yeah, before you do the work. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So if it kind of just be more of like a loose, this is what we're looking for. And Sorry, I meant yeah. to print that up. I must have left it on my desk with the stuff. <laughs> I was looking at the schedule. That's what everybody's right. looking at on my thing. But that would still keep us online because then in the beginning of April, we'll be talking about revenues. And then there's actually one on April 30th that says expense summary, which you could look at the whole budget as a whole. Yep. All Thank of us you. at the same time at that point. So, I mean, it would keep us in line with where we're normally yeah. at at this point. I think I like your recommendation. Let's look at the big ticket items, see if there's anything that, A, we think are, is missing or something. <coughs> we're just, it's a hard no. So that would be appropriate to me. Do we have to have three meetings to do that? I don't know if we have three meetings on the schedule, Rick. So you have... <laughs> have public works and parks and recreation on the 13th we've got governing body admin inspections police and the canal funds uh, then March 18th we have CIP and projects so technically the <coughs> CIP and projects I would assume would kind of just be included throughout the rest of our requests am I right or am I wrong yeah. so you might be able to eliminate that one is, and so Our if you're looking at april is there any way we can pull some of the april into march i don't think so because i think what he's saying is they're not going to have like the state distributed they're not going to know the numbers yet to give you your revenues and right. it's hard for us to try to balance anything without knowing what we're going to balance again so because the only thing that's in april is in april we've got the we've got a meeting for general fund revenue and tax rate then we have one for the B part fund rev revenue, and then we have one at the end of the month that says budget meeting expense summary, which is where we would have the line by line. And that's budget. April 30th? Mm -hmm. Okay, I think our plan was that we would right. kind of give right. the high level guidance, and then April's their month to put the okay. sheets together. Okay. It, based on what we've said, do you see a way we can reduce the number of meetings, get more into a date? What do you guys think? So I would think that if you leave March 8th with Christy and Chris, and then on March 13th, I think you could do the rest of us and also include CIP and projects because I think the rest of us will be fairly quick. Let's try to do that. Okay. And then, I mean, honestly, if you look into April, if you did want to combine more, I know we're not there, you could probably do all the revenue on one day. We usually, we've always done revenue on one day, but that's not a must. It's up to you guys. I'm all for getting done sooner as long as we get a thorough job done. Everybody likes revenue. All right. But so we'll just go through, we'll, we'll do the March 8th one would be the next budget meeting and it would just be Christy and Chris. Yep. Sorry, I totally hijacked that maybe and I forgot. That's fine. <laughs> well, it's all related to the budget stuff, so. All right. Is there a motion we adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. second. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you all for being here. We have the privilege of being back in session at 5 o'clock for the regular meeting.